Hi, how's everybody today? It is gorgeous here, 64 degrees, blue skies, a few little white puffy clouds. I'm still on my mission to put meals in the freezer for when we start heading south. And today, that meal is chili, so it's a perfect day for chili. Now, there are a thousand and one chili recipes, and and all different and mostly all kind of the same thing. And there's Texas chili and there's Cincinnati chili. And I personally like those chilies that are more chunky beef and beef forward chilies than the ones that are more just ground beef and tomato forward. And there's nothing wrong with those. This is just my preference for chili. I like a very beefy chili and so I'm going to walk you through today how I'm going to make my chili. First thing I want to do, because I like dried chilies, to use dried chilies in my chili. So I'm going to do two of my ancho chilies, and then I'm going to do two chili DR bowls. Now, these chili DR bowls are going to have some kick to them. So if you do not want any kick, don't put them in. If you want a lot of kick, add a few more. And I have two cups of beef stock that I have brought up to a boil and I'm just going to drop those in there and let them sit and soak while we get the rest of our mise en place together. So I have a pound of this really nice grass-fed ground beef and I've got my beef shank here and I for your for your chopped chunked chunky meat again you can do ground chalk or you can do brisket you can mix and match whatever you like and you're looking for in your chunky stew meat two pounds so all together we're going to have three pounds of meat i've got my dutch oven heating up over here and i just want to season this with a little salt and pepper before it goes into the pot so i'm just going to do a swirl of avocado oil then i'm going to put the cubed meat in first and because i don't want to crowd my pan i'm going to do that in batches i was going to weigh that but i think that looked like about two pounds so while that is going in batches let me share with you what else we have going so i've got one onion small dice i did two of my Clubano peppers. You can do green bell peppers if you want absolutely no heat. You can add jalapenos or just use jalapenos, but use some kind of a pepper. And then I don't even know how many things of garlic. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I just wanted to show you real quick when you're working with whole fresh garlic and that has that little brown nib cut that off because that gets really bitter now because i'm going to use the food processor anyway i'm going to cheat and i'm going to put my garlic in this food processor to chop now i'm also going to use a can of tomatoes and for me my preference because i only want to stock one kind of canned tomatoes so i go for the san marzano tomatoes they're just my favorite. They're thick walled. They are a little bit sweeter. And the thing with the whole peeled Roma tomato is that's all you need. It's all you need to make ketchup. It's all you need to make spaghetti sauce. It's all you need to make pizza sauce. It's all you need to make ragu. It's all you need to make chili. So it is just the most well-rounded. And you do not want a diced tomato because they are treated with something. So that they hold their shape so they're never going to just melt into that sauce and this is just a brand that i like i just always try to look at the ingredients and the thing that i like about this one is that the ingredients are san marzano plum peel tomatoes and san marzano tomato puree and now because there was just a little bit of that stew mint left i'm going to go ahead and add this ground beef in now for me there's only one pot to cook my chili in and that's my cast iron dutch oven if you don't have a cast iron dutch oven 
you should run out and buy one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you should do this in something that is very heavy bottom because this is going to cook for a long time. And you want even heat distribution. If you have a really thin pot, it's just going to get right in the center there really dark because all your heat's going to stay right in the center and it's not going to evenly work its way through your pan or your pot. Now, because I had the beef shanks, I have these beautiful bones and they've just filled inside with marrow. So I'm actually going to drop these in my chili. Um, they're just going to need nothing but add flavor. And quite frankly, I love that marrow. So obviously that is a personal preference thing. It's just if you if you saw them floating in my chili, I wanted you to know why. I'm going to set those aside for now. So you just see how beautiful these tomatoes are and how nice that puree is in them. Just want to break them up. So I know beans are very controversial too. And if you don't want them in your chili, you know what? You just don't have to put them in your chili. It's just that simple. I like some beans in my chili. So I went with a mixture of Pinto beans and black beans, and I just did a one half cup of each and soaked them. So I'm going to set them aside. So we've got all of our meat out, and now we're going to add to the pan our onion and peppers. And we're going to let those soften up. So I want to get the seeds and the stems off of my peppers. Now I just, I just run my hands down to remove those seeds. And we don't have to wash this. It's going in there where that garlic was and it's perfectly fine. If a few seeds sneak in, I promise you it's not the end of the world. Then the same thing with those two little chili de or bowls. We're just gonna squeeze those seeds right out of there. And that's what I do. I just come here and work my way up and just squeeze them all out the top. And I'm gonna add that Juice. We want to keep all of this. We don't want any of this liquid getting away from us. This is amazing stuff here. So we're going to give that a nice puree. So you see this beautiful paste that we made. I'm going to give that one more little turn. And I also want to add about one cup of strong black coffee. I'm just going to make that over that can and we get all of the leftovers from that can and not dirty a cup. So our onions are softened up. We've got a little bit of caramelization going on them. Then we're going to add our garlic. Because we only want to give that about a minute. All right, so our garlic is gone about one minute. We're going to add all of that meat back in. Then we're going to start with our seasonings. I am doing two kinds of chili powder. I've got your normal chili powder that they sell, you know, that just says chili powder, basic chili powder. And I'm going to do three tablespoons. And then I'm going to do poncho chili powder. And I'm going to start with two tablespoons. And then we'll see. We'll taste and see. And I want to get these spices in here while this is still hot and sizzling in here because that really just kind of helps waking them up and then cumin I'm just going to do a lot of fan of too much cumin I don't want the cumin to take over so I'm going to do one teaspoon of cumin I'm going to do a tablespoon of dried oregano I'm going to do a teaspoon of paprika and then cayenne is going to be up to you and your spice level. I'm probably just going to do a half a teaspoon. But you can adjust that to your seasoning preference. And then I'm not going to put my seasonings up because we might come back and adjust and, and add. I've already got some salt on my meat. I don't want to add any salt because this is going to sit and cook for so long and reduce so I don't want it to get overly salty but I am going to do a couple rounds of fresh ground pepper and absolutely use your all black here I think I have my mix just because that's what I picked up and then hot sauce and we'll measure it just for the recipe but I think I'm going to do a tablespoon of hot sauce use your favorite 
Worcestershire sauce and do a tablespoon. And now I'm going to go in with that puree, that ancho and chili de arbo puree that we made. And then we're going to do all the rest of that beef stock, our tomatoes, our cup of coffee. And if you don't want to do coffee, you can do beer or just omit it. You don't have to do the beer or the coffee. And then if you like beans, you're going to add your beans. And again, I did a half a cup of black beans, a half a cup of pinto beans dry, and I soaked them. But you could, you know, add a can of kidney beans or your favorite kind of beans. I would just probably do one 15-ounce can. Now we want to taste. Before we set this to simmer, let's just see what we think. really good oh, that is so good so my chilies come to a boil I am going to move it back to my simmer burner and I just want to keep this at a nice even steady simmer I'm going to come check on it every once in a while give it a stir but for the most part I'm just going to let that go for three hours I'm going to check it in three hours and I'm going to at that point Check on if it's gotten thick enough for me. I'm going to check to see if it has um, gotten tender enough for me. The beans are done. So I made the biggest mess here. So I'm going to clean up my mess and then we'll come back and check on it in three hours. So we are coming up on the two hour mark and I just wanted to show you how we're doing and how we're thickening up. It is smelling amazing. And you can see I put my two shank bones in there. So I am going to pop the top back on her and give her another hour. All right, so we're getting pretty close and I just, I think we're about two hours and 45 minutes and I just want to take a peek, test a piece of meat to see how tender it is. Check my beans to see how soft they have gotten and look what I made to go with it. I know this dish is ridiculous. It was the biggest, it was the only one that fit my cornbread. Roasted poblano upside down cornbread. It's pretty amazing. I've been sitting over here eating some. But I think that this uh, chili needed some cornbread. So. so that is what I did. So I've got a piece of meat. Oh, it cut like nothing. But when you're eating chili, you just want to put that in your mouth. There's not any knives involved. And so you just want to make sure that you can chew that. I want to, I want to find us a bean to test. All right, I think this is getting cool enough. Mm, perfect. Oh, and it is so good. So beefy. So that is perfect. Cooked perfect. Taste is amazing. Let's check the beans. Beans are perfect too. I've left, uh, I put the top off about 15 minutes ago just to let it thicken up. I personally do not mind my chili. I think I, I like this. Let me show you. Some people like their chili where you can like stand a spoon up in it and they like it that thick. And I'm just not that. Wait, so you can see it's, it's got some movement to it, but it's not liquidy like a soup. So I, I like it just like this. And if you, I'm going to turn that heat off because I think it's perfect. If you wanted it thicker and let it cook a little bit longer with the lid off, you could add some cornmeal, you could add some masa and that would thicken it up. But I think it's perfect just the way it is. Now for me, you know, there's all kinds of toppings, right? Everybody has different toppings for their chili. And I'm pretty simple. I like cheddar cheese and sour cream. Of course, you could do green onions. You could do red onions. You could do Fritos. Or, in this case, I'm going to do... A little bit of cornbread 
I lost my knife again. I know that seems to be an issue. So what I like to do is just crumble up that cornbread and then you got those roasted green poblanas on there. I'll just eat that. I love them. I think they're so good. So this is my version of the way I like chili. I like it beefy. I like it chunky. I like some cornbread crumbled up in it. A little sour cream. And to me, it's the perfect, it's the perfect bite of chili. I probably shouldn't put this in my mouth, but I'm going to. It is so good. Y'all think we could take this to the fair, to the chili fest and win some awards. This is just maybe the best pot of chili I have ever ever made it was just perfect so this recipe exactly 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 what we did today i took notes i've got it all written down so i'm going to put the recipe for this on the website so if you want to make this exactly like this the recipe is there for you if you just want to take the parts of this that you like then that'll be there for you too and remember substitute for what you like beans no beans, bell peppers, jalapenos, poblanos. I highly recommend the dry chilies, but you know what? Maybe just do one ancho if you don't, if you're if you're worried about it, and kind of start off that way. So, make some chili. It's chili season. Thank y'all so much for being here. Love y'all, and I'll see you next time. And until then, stay cruising.